Hello everyone, myself Saman Akil. I am working as an assistant professor in IMT College of Pharmacy. Today we will be discussing about transdermal drug delivery system. Before moving on further, let's have a look on the contents. Introduction, skin permeation enhancers, types of transdermal drug delivery system, drug selection criteria, advantages of TDDS, disadvantages, basic components and evaluation study. Now let, let's come on to the introduction. Transdermal drug delivery system or TDDS, these are topically administered, topically means applied to the skin. These are topically administered medicaments in the form of patches that deliver drugs for systemic effects at a predetermined and controlled rate. These are topically applied on the skin having um, drug or medicaments and then releases onto the blood circulation at a predetermined and uncontrolled rate. Transdermal patch, it is in the form of adhesive patch that adheres to the skin uh, containing a coating of medicine or drug. It is placed onto the skin to deliver a specific dose of the medicine, whatever the dose is required into the blood over a specific period of time. Now let's have a look on the structure of the skin. Basically, the skin is made up of three layers: epidermis, dermis, hypodermis. <clears throat> Epi layer is epidermis is the uppermost layer of the skin. It is further classified into five types of layers: stratum corneum, also known as the horny layer, stratum lucidum, clear layer, stratum granulosum, granular layer, stratum spinosum, spiny layer, stratum germinatum, regenerative layer. Below it is the dermis and the deep beneath is, is the hypodermis. These are the properties for ideal permeation enhancers. As we are give, formulating a transdermal drug delivery system through the skin so that uh, it, the permeation enhancers are very much important. Permeation enhancers means that enhances or increases the permeation, permeation of the drug. So these are very much required in the formulation of TDDS as the drug has to permeate through the skin to show its pharmacological action. So the properties for up, uh, ideal permeation enhancer, it should be non-toxic, non-irritating, non-allergic. It should be rapid working. It should have no pharmacological activity within the body. It should work unidirectionally, that is only in single direction. It should be compatible with both excipients and drug. It should be cosmetically accept acceptable on the skin. Now, here comes the factors affecting transdermal permeation. These are the factors which must be kept in mind before formulating any transdermal drug delivery system. First is the partition coefficient, uh, the drug whichever is choose for trans for formulating this type of drug delivery system must be must have a good partition coefficient, the pH condition of the skin, the drug concentration, the molecular weight. Now, these are the types of transdermal drug delivery system. First is the single layer drug inadhesive, multi layer drug inadhesive, drug reservoir inadhesive, and drug matrix inadhesive. The first one is the single layer drug inadhesive. It is characterized by the inclusion of the drug directly within the skin contacting adhesive. This is directly applied on the skin contacting the adhesive, whichever adhesive is used. It is in the form of single layer. Next is the multi-layer drug in adhesive. It is similar to the single layer in that the drug is incorporated directly into the adhesive, but it consists of multi-layer. The third one is the reservoir transdermal system. It is characterized by the inclusion of a liquid compartment containing a drug solution or suspension separated from the release liner by a semi-permeable membrane and adhesive. The reservoir contains the drug in the form of a solution and uh, in the liquid compartment and it is separated by the release liner through a semi-permeable membrane. The fourth one is the matrix system design. It is characterized by the inclusion of a semi-solid matrix containing a drug solution or suspension, which is in direct contact with the release liner. Now, the in the matrix in the matrix system, the, there is an inclusion of semi-solid matrix, whereas in the reservoir system, there was the inclusion of the liquid compartment. Now, these are drug characters suitable for transdermal drug delivery system. The drug we are choosing for these type of formulation. 
First is physico chemical properties of drugs. It should have the molecular weight less than 1000 Daltons. The ideal weight should be between 800 to 1000 Daltons. It should have affinity for both lipophilic and hydrophilic phases. Like it must be compatible for both lipid and hydrophilic phase. It should have low melting point. The biological properties which are essential for selecting these type of drugs candidates, it should be potent, less than 20 mg. Potent means that is very effective in short, small concentration. And the half-life uh, half should be short. The T half must be less. Must not include a cutaneous irritant or allergic response. There should not be any, the drug must not uh, do any harm, uh, cutaneous irritant or allergic response to the skin, to the cutaneous membrane. Drug which degrades in the GI tract or inactivated by hepatic pass effect are suitable candidates. The drugs which are which are not stable in the GI media or that are inactivated by the metabolism, first metabolism, the, these type of drugs are suitable for the transformer drug delivery system. The tolerance to the drug must not develop. Drugs which has to be administered for a longer period of time can be formulated as uh, the uh, release is for a longer period of time. Drugs which cause adverse effect to non-target tissue can also be formulated. Advantages of transdermal drug delivery system. Easy to use. You can apply a patch very easily. Avoidance of first pass effect as we have discussed this earlier also. There is no first pass effect or metabolism. The longer There is longer duration of action. The these, the comparable characteristics with IV infusion, the characters can be compared with the IV infusion. There is no interference with gastric and intestinal fluids. More improved and convenient patient compliance, which is not, uh, which is not accepted in the, uh, like consuming the tablets or capsule, the patient might not be compliant, but in this type of transcriptive system, the patient compliance is higher. Self-medication is possible. You can apply the patch by own self. Suitable for such type of drug that are having very short half-life such as nitroglycerin. The disadvantages of transdermal drug delivery system are all, also present here. Pure diffusion of large molecules. The large molecules may not diffuse properly. Uh, there must be some skin irritation. Unsuitable if the drug dose is large. Only suitable for the drug if the drug dose is small. Absorption efficiency is vary with different sides of the skin like some part of the skin may uh, get higher absorption as compared to other part of the skin. Daily dose more than 10 mg is not possible. Basic components of transdermal delivery system. The basic components of TDDS are first is the polymer matrix, second drug, third permeation enhancers and last are the other excipient. These are the general components required for formulating transdermal drug delivery system. Polymer matrix, natural polymers may be cellulose derivatives, gelatin, shellac, waxes, proteins, gums, natural rubble, starch, etc. Synthetic polymers may be PVA, PVC, polyamide, polyvinyl fluoride, polyacrylate, polyurea, PVP, epoxy, etc. Drug is the very essential components. Permeation enhancers, which enhances the permeation and other excipients. Now let's come on to the evaluation of transdermal drug delivery systems. First, you have formulated these type of drug delivery systems. You have to evaluate whether these are efficient or not. There are four types of evolution. First is the physicochemical evolution. Second, in vitro evolution. Third, in vivo evolution. And last are the stability studies. Physicochemical evolution contains the uh, identifying the physico, physical and chemical properties of the patch, of, of the formulated patch or the developed patch. First is the thickness. The thickness of the patch is measured. Second is the uniformity of weight. The weight should be uniform. Third, drug content determination, determination how much drug is present in the patch. Fourth is the moisture content, how much moisture is present. Fifth is the adhesive evolution, like it is having the property of adhesiveness or not. Next is the tensile strength, 
how much tension can can it bear the patch the bear how much tension can the patch bear folding endurance the patch may be fold or not and the last are the microscopic studies next is the in vitro evolution in vitro means outside uh, performing the evolution outside the body so uh, there are a number of apparatus through which in vitro evolution can be done first is the diffusion cell second is the reciprocating cylinder third is the cylinder modified usb basket and fourth is the fda method paddle over disc these are different type of method as per the different type of pharmacopias to evaluate the transdermal drug delivery system in vitro Next are the in vivo evolution that are performed inside the body. These are of two types. The in vivo evolution could be done in animal models. And after that, that is preclinical. And after that, it could be done in human volunteers. That is the clinical method. The last method is the the last method of st is the stability studies. You have to also uh, analyze how much your uh, patch or formulated patch is stable according to the international conference on harmonization that is ich which gives the guidelines of stability these according to these guidelines by storing the tdds samples at 40 plus minus 2 degrees celsius and 75 plus minus 5 deg 5 percent relative humidity for six months you have to keep your formulated transdermal patches at 40 plus minus 2 degree Celsius temperature and at 75 plus minus 5% relative humidity for 6 months. These samples were withdrawn at 0, 30, 60, 90 and 180 days. This is There is 30 days interval before within the withdrawn of the sample and these are analyzed for drug content by suitable analytical techniques. By using different type of analytical techniques, the drug content is measured within the time interval of the time period of 30 minutes, 30 days. Thank you.